What's up guys? This is Chalo the Fashion Fairy. If you want to learn how to make a perfect color, definitely keep watching, seeing my tutorial. Day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my hey so fairies, in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to make a color stand and a color fall. So it's called a two-piece color. You can use the first one as your bishop's color. So the first thing I'd want you to do is to measure the circumference of where you are trying to attach the color to. And then we're going to be dividing that by two. The reason is that I want to do this on full. That's why I'm doing this. So the second press I'm working with is 19 inches. I divided that by two and I got nine and a half inches. And here is my nine and a half inch mark. This is not a standard guys. You are actually required to measure the circumference of the color that you are working with. So um, after I made that mark, I drew a straight line. So um, the entire length of the line I just drew was nine and a half inches. So at this point, I marked one and quarter inch. This is not a standard, guys. You can mark between one and quarter and then to one and a half. So whichever you decide to use is still perfect and will still come out the same way. I'll go ahead and divide this line into two. And I'll make a mark right there. Using a straight line, I'm going to draw a line from my one and quarter all the way to this line right there. At this point also, I'm going to draw a straight line. So placing my tape at this point, I measured 2 inches above the straight line. I also measured one and quarter inch above the line and I made a mark as well. Going in with my curve, I'm going to connect from the one and quarter mark all the way to the midpoint which we measured earlier. At this point, you will decide how wide you want the bishop's color to be. I decided to make mine one inch. You can use as much as one and a half inches for this. So from this point, I marked one inch inward. Using my curve, I connected it from that point all the way to the one inch I marked inward, giving it this beautiful looking shape. I will also be using my curve to connect it all the way to that one and quarter inch that I marked at the middle point of our collar stand. And this is what it looks like. Remember to use your pencil to make it run smoothly, as smoothly as possible, guys. Going in with my ruler, I'm going to be using broken lines to be connecting it all the way to the top part of the bishop's collar. So if you're making just a piece collar, you can stop here. But since we are making a collar stand and a collar fall, we'll be going ahead. So from this point, I'll be marking one inch inward. So I'll be going in with my curve to connect it all the way from that one inch inwards that we marked all the way to the other point. Now, make sure that it's not too curvy while you're at it because I noticed mine was a bit curvy and I cleaned this off. So while you're trying to get a curve, you don't want it to be too curvy. So now is a good time to determine the width of your collar for I decided to use two inches for mine. You can go as, as big as two and a half inches. So I measured two inches and on this line, I measured nine inches. Using a straight line, I will rule out the nine inches like so. Now, if you want yours to extend a bit further, you can make it nine and a half inches. So from that nine, nine inches, I connected it all the way to that point right there. So guys, we're as good as done with this pattern drafting. So this is the collar stand and here is the collar four. So we'll be going um, with this to our fabric 
so that we will add necessary allowances we'll cut this out and i'll show you how to make this so um looking at it i decided to decrease it a bit further and i decided to make it one and a half inches so guys um i felt the other part was too big and i didn't want it to be so big so um this is totally up to you um to make it as big or as small as you want but i ended up adjusting it accordingly so um the points i just marked will be on fold they will be on fold that part will be on fold as well so i will be cutting two of each so i've already gone ahead to cut out the fabric that i'll be using to cut this out so let me show you show you how i prepared the fabric um this is what it looks like i already put gum stay on it if you have color stay you can use this and i folded this and remember i said we'll be cutting on fold so i placed the edge i made sure everything aligned properly and i'm going to pin this all the way if you've been with me on this channel long enough you would notice that i like to pin a lot um, and this is the color for um, note that I'm positioning it in such a way that I'll be able to add allowances everywhere on this so um, I added half inch allowance here half inch all the way around it and I also did that with the color fall as well So this is what it looks like so far guys so we'll be needing two of each so this is just one i'll be using it to cut the next set so i already did that off camera and this these are the pieces that i'm working with so far so um like i said you'll be needing two of each one as the um lining and the other one as the main uh cloth or fabric <laughs> okay so this is what we have we'll be placing this right sides together and i'll be going to my sewing machine and i'll be doing it all the way and i'll also be turning it out so i already did that and this is what i have i'm just using the pattern to show you that i've done it perfectly so going in with my scissors i'm cutting out all the excesses right guys i just don't like having a bulky color so whatever is your eye excess you may want to reduce it by a quarter inch so i'm cutting it out and i'm going to turn this inside out so while you're at it you may want to cut out the edges like so so that by the time you bring it out it will be pointy and then we're going to be reinforcing this by running a stitch on it so make sure you use um a scissor this is tricky if you're not careful you're going to make a hole and i'm not even joking about this so we're going to reinforce stitches on it like i'm showing you and i'll do this and come back to you in a bit so i already did that and using the color stand i just um wanted to notch the middle part up and down so that i'll be able to attach it if you look well you can also see that i notched the color fall as well so this is how i'll be placing it on it guys and i'll be leaving a half inch above this um so that i'll be able to attach it on my shirt so this is what i expect you to do and you're going to sandwich the color fall in had how do i explain this you're going to sandwich it so it means it's going to be in the middle and we're going to run a line and leave half inch to join it to the main um um shirt so this is what i've done so far i've attached it i left half inch right there and um i'm going to turn this out like so and every excess you want to cut off at this point So this is my working piece and what i'm about to do now is to find the middle part of the back and i made a mark right there and this will um enable me to join the collar properly so i'm just going to flip this inside out and then i'm going to use my pins going with my pins to attach the collar first before i sew it down so i'll go ahead and match my notches this with that on the shirt and i'm going in with my pins to secure this nicely and then i'm also going to pin this all the way to the front so notice that i've already finished everything about this shirt so this is usually the last step 
and that um, half inch that i told you guys to leave earlier um this is me trying to make sure that i sandwich it properly i'm going to still zoom this video in so that you'll be able to see this properly so this is up close and personal of how i did um the edge of this so that half inch we left earlier look at that half inch mark i just opened it up like so and i matched the color fall accordingly you want to make sure everything is properly aligned before you pin this so let me just quickly align this so this is what it looks like i'm going to use my pin to secure this and i'm going to pin it on the um shirt so um i'm already done attaching this part so i'll be going over to my sewing machine to secure this with um a straight stitch and i'll also be going in to fold in the half inch that we left and i'm also going to run a stitch to hold this so um let me quickly do this and come back to you guys with it so i've attached the first one so um i'm going to go in with my scissors to make sure that it's properly relaxed so i'm, I'm making random notches um on this so that i'll be able to turn this in so um i folded it in like so and then i'm going to run a stitch to hold this so uh, make sure you tuck this in very very well if it's difficult for you to do you can go in with your scissors and uh, tuck this in properly so like i said i like to pin so i'm just going to first of all pin this down and then i'll head over to my sewing machine to secure it nicely So let me show you what i did with this edge so what i did was i opened it up like so tucked the inner one in and i folded it in the the upper part so i folded in the inner one first make sure, made sure it was tucked in properly and then i folded in the half inch that was left so um like i said you can go in with your scissors to make sure it's properly tucked in So I've gone ahead to secure this nicely with um, a straight stitch and you can see that this is, looks so perfect and it is so neat. So guys, this is exactly how to fix your collar for your shirts and it will come out nicely. Um, let's see the end result of this and this is what it looks like. I've not, of course, I've not added the buttons yet, but it looks perfect and it doesn't have any it's not gaping so guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel i can't wait to see you in my next video bye